first off, thank you for coming on the podcast. I'm super excited. No problem, brother. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Doug. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, I also, Rose is on as a, uh, uh, I had her on another like, episode and we're good friends and she told me to get you on and I was like, oh no, he looks intimidating. And she's like, I, I named dropped really him funny. all. Oh, do you know Jerry Garcia? Yeah. yeah. I said, and then I started sending all your, like, and then I reached out to Jerry, Jerry, this podcast advice, comedy podcast. Nice. Okay. Hell yeah, I'm down, dog. I'm down. I've been doing a lot of these podcasts, man. So it's cool, dude. I got my own podcast to promote too. So it's a good time. Oh, yeah. A little, yeah. A little cross, uh, I, yeah, so I was gonna say you've got two of them, American Wannabes yeah. and uh, It's Not My Weekend, which are both great yes. podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The American Wannabes been running for a long time. We got a strong following, dog. We've been doing it for like three, four years now. We're going, we're entering our fourth year, dog. So it and we got a bunch of people following us. It gets picking up a lot of steam, and so then from there we all decided to do our own little little multiverse universe. So we all decided to do our own as well, just to keep. Mm -hmm more content going huh? yeah but we all do our own it's three of us and so we all do our own and then we get together to do the american wannabes and it's working out really well because we all have our own little fan base too so we all just separate it's pretty it's, it's just working out really cool that's awesome because it's you jesus sepulveda and uh christian zaragoza is yes, that right sir. yes sir I, well, I, and you guys are also good <laughs> yeah yeah they're all they're all really good and, and you guys have done like marvel universe where you've got your avengers yes. with the american wannabes and yes. then you've got your uh, would you be the i i think you're iron man because you've got the chic <laughs> look mm -hmm. you've got the cool glasses and uh and the wit so i'll just say uh, like black widow but yeah i'll take i'll take <laughs> <laughs> i can see the sex appeal that's as true. long as i'm not a hot guy i'm good dog <laughs> 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 but uh no yeah 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 we all got our own little special powers dog and we all do our thing on the side yeah i would say probably iron man me uh i don't know because who's captain america christian probably like the hulk or some shit but uh yeah we all we're all pretty we're all headliners basically is how i see each other dog. we're all headline we're all equal we have a lot of fun okay. dude. and uh yeah we've been doing it for a long time and yeah it's really fun dog i don't know how much you've listened to it or or, or at all but that we really get into some real cool stuff and uh people have a blast with it man we get into our personal life. We get into just whatever's happening on the news, uh, Netflix stuff. HBO, we just get into it and talk about all that shit's going on with us. Uh oh, HBO, HBO, HBO. Yes, sir. Of course, HBO <laughs> special going on right now. It's on weekend. Uh, so it's actually really cool because the HBO special's been there for like a year, right? Actually, uh, in July it turned one year. It, it was 2019 when it when it premiered. But lately, it's picking up a lot of steam because HBO Max is pushing hard right now. It's doing a lot. Good. Of Publicity, and so I mean, they're even gonna have Wonder Woman there. Uh, HBO Max gonna have Wonder Woman on December twenty fifth, the, the 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 sequel. So right now, HBO is putting a lot of commercials in. So I'm getting a lot of like, I'm noticing a lot of people hitting me up. A lot, I'm getting a lot of uh, followers now, messaging people. Yeah. Your HBO special, I just saw your HBO. So so people just now are watching it. It's a trip. But it's been there for oh. a year. It's been there. That's good. That's so cool. And I was going to say too, I've been seeing on in your Instagram that people have been posting about it and tagging you on it and yeah. seeing it. And I just recently saw it too. And it was absolutely hilarious. I think you oh, did thanks, it in Glendale, man. Glendale, yeah, yeah. California, right? Glendale, yeah. California. There's a, we have a Glendale too, fool. Not just <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I was gonna say, I love the intro too, where you bring your kids in the car and you're yeah. like, "Hey guys, uh, Daddy's got to do a special. You guys can yeah. stay here, right?" And like, yeah, yeah, Jesus back. comes out. Yeah, Jesus is there. Dog. He he's the ballet dude too. Yeah, it's, it's dope, man. Yeah, but that was awesome. It was such a good special, and you talked about so much. You talked about being a dad. You talked about your two baby mamas, the white one and the Mexican one. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about your kids and, and the different things growing up with those family dynamics, like the sugar daddy, sugar step daddy. The sugar step daddy. I call him my sugar step daddy. Now, we all need one in our lives, dog. We need one. Rosie, I hope you got one. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. You're going to have a sugar stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it was so cool because it seems like, you know, things can, can um, there might be power dynamics or different changes and it's all strange to, I mean, everything's strange to us in terms of relationships. You get married, you have girlfriends, whatever. Um, but yeah. you're able to just squeeze that comedy nectar out of it and talking about things like, oh yeah, I don't try to compete with the stepdad. I'm like, oh, he got exactly. you these shoes? 
can he get you some pants 32 slim <laughs> so, i love yeah, yeah. I, I, the, I love to go ahead sorry no no yeah it's, it's facts bro because that joke <laughs> that joke is, it almost wrote itself because obviously that would really happen <laughs> i would pick up my kids and they would have like money in their pocket they would have like 20 dollars each and at first I'll be like, man, who's giving you this money, dog? Like, oh, my mom's boyfriend, this and that. And at first I'll be hurt, but then I'll be like, we got 40 bucks to spend right now anywhere. We can literally eat. Cause I'm over here driving there stressing where we're gonna eat because I got, I'm on a budget. And all of a sudden we got Sizzler on the table. We got Olive Garden on the table. It's all there, dog. So I don't know, it's one of those, it's one of those things where you just check yourself and you're like, dog, this is this was literally helping me, like, with with income. Dog. He's he's paying me, fool. Like, what am I? What am I mad about? You know, so. <laughs> they need to spend uh, time, huh, with the kids. Spend time. Yeah, yeah. Never, hey. Since then, I've been adding more to that to those bits. I've been adding new new jokes about how like it's like the pressure's off of me now with a stepdad. You know, I'm like a I'm like a cool uncle at best. You know, and, uh, <laughs> like you know. I call them up when they start, you know, my kids start talking back. I call them like, hey, man, come get our kids, dog. Cause you, got, <laughs> you, got a hand or you got to talk to these guys, man. And, uh, oh, anyway, it's, it's fun. It's, it's just a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of truth that's going out there. It's one of those things where, like, it's not even you have to be raised by a single parent. It's like we all know someone who's raised by a single parent, right? There's always a family member, a friend, neighbors. Everybody knows somebody. Like my parents are happily together. They've been happily together over forty-five years. Married, still That's going nice. strong. Nice. I didn't know about that single parenting thing until I, I lived. Just can't it. find women like your mama anymore. Nah, well they're not. They're, they're, dinos, they're called dinosaurs. <laughs> Rare species. They belong in museums. <laughs> She's like the like the Cal Ripken Jr. of uh, marriages. But uh. Oh, yeah, dog. Is it so? I I didn't know anything about the single single parent. Like, dog, I didn't grow up in that household, fool. So living all that now, and then and it was just a recent thing for me. You know, I've only been separated for like seven years, so all that was new. So all that was that was my life, dog. So at first it brings you down. You trip out. You're like, holy shit, what's going on here? It's too much. And then once all you get past all that. Then the funny shit starts coming now. You're Girl, able to write about maybe it. Maybe I should have stayed talk about with it. <laughs> yeah. It starts off with just talking with people like Rosie, like <laughs> yourself, other comedians. You start sharing these thoughts. Dog, it's crazy, man. This fool's been giving them money, dog. What should I do? And they're like, fool, spend that shit, dog. <laughs> and you're, yeah, you're right, huh, fool? You're right. Why am I tripping? And then you start like kind of writing shit and figuring it out. It, it writes itself, what I'm trying to tell you. It's, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. That, that's really cool. That, that's really cool. And I was just going to say too, I think even from the perspective of just a parent, single parent or married, whatever, you also bring into to the light some of the things and challenges parents have. Like when you were talking about they keep getting older and their homework keeps getting harder. So it's harder yeah, to be able to help harder. them out. And then I think one yeah. of my favorite bits in the whole special was talking about the stars and just talking about how the oh, educational yeah. system and how our culture is like, well, we don't want to be mean to them. So we're not going to yeah. say they're, they're failing. So they're just failing. a regular yeah. star. And so you're like, oh, my yeah, son, he's got star. stars. You want to talk about how good he is? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, that bit is so good. Yeah. That's a, yeah, I really enjoy that bit. That's, that's um, again, true story. Kids, on, uh, they were like, in, this has happened when they were like in primary school, they're middle school now, but this happened when they were like in third and fourth grade. Uh, the teacher herself decided not to give the kids grades. She decided to give them stars, dog. So we would go to, to parent conference and they were like, well, look, he's, he's a superstar. And she would underline, he's a superstar, but he needs to get to all-star level. Kind of shit. <laughs> And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Does he have a B or a C? I don't get what you're saying. Like, and, uh, yeah. She's like, you don't want to be here. She, she would circle, you don't want to be here. And I'm like, that, you mean star? You don't want him to be there? Like, star? Stars are stars. It was just like this one teacher that was started doing this. And, uh, you know, these hippie teachers nowadays, dog, is like uh, young teachers. I don't know. Trying to make a difference. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Grading uh, system. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and I was going to say too, I think uh, one of the really cool things that I think you do, not just in your special, but through your podcasts, um, American Wannabes, and um, It's Not My Weekend, is, is you do such a good job of blending English and Spanish, where it's almost like you're putting it as a nice garnish to your stuff mm -hmm. so that uh like i i was listening to one of your episodes of it's not my weekend you're talking with your kids and you're like uh i just got coronavirus just getting over it which i'm glad to see you look 100 percent again but you're oh, like you. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, pueden apagar las velas. i don't know what that means <laughs> but it sounds hilarious but no I'm kidding. <laughs> but like being able being able to just sprinkle that stuff in so um you can you, you like attract community the community that speaks spanish and then you also like add yeah. this nice flavor of it doesn't get in the way and people that don't speak spanish aren't like what but mm -hmm. it's it's a nice like outer dimensional thing so i really like how you do that yeah now. yeah i appreciate that bro because that's honestly I, that's something i don't practice it but it's a very natural thing to do and then sometimes you forget who's listening so you just become yourself you're just being yourself is what it is dog so when you know, you kind of know your audience and you know what, how far, how much Spanish you can speak and how much you, and how much you got to pull back as well. It's just one of the things where it just becomes a natural thing. It's funny because I do this vent on one of my episodes. I don't know if it's on American Wannabes or on my uh, podcast, but I do this vent about, that's one of the things that I hate about like these Latino Latin X shows that they force the bilingualness, right? They, they force it and they have to, like, it just comes out so unnatural because they have to throw in some Spanish when it doesn't need there's no Spanish needed there, dog. And a lot of these shows do that, these Latinx shows where there's a, there's a Latino, he has to blend in. Oh, like, hey, how you doing? And then like, uh, it's muy bien, thank you. Like, you don't have to speak, we don't talk like that, dog. We don't say muy bien in the middle of the sentence, dog. No, I'm doing good, bro. Like, how are you doing? We don't, we don't force, we don't, basically we don't force the Spanglish. You can't force the Spanglish, dog. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it's really good. And it's something that I've noticed because so my wife, she's Brazilian. So we'll speak mm. Portuguese in the house and, and um, I speak Italian from my family. And we've come across moments where we might be speaking and people are like, mm, well, are you going to speak fucking English now? And so, <laughs> you know, just being conscious of that and trying not to, to exclude people. I'm trying yeah. to be conscious of what to speak. And then seeing you do it it's like man you just drop a chingada in there or you drop something <laughs> in there that's fucking awesome so i i think you're it, it sounds like you're very conscious of it you grew up kind of doing it and you yeah. do it really masterfully where it's not an overdose for people so yeah it is it is used more like a like an explanation mark right it's just used for like a, to, to emphasize a point and shit so just yeah kind of just throw it out there but just don't force it like you don't have to speak we get it you're latino we see it you're dark <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to force the, the Spanish all the time. So it's one of those things. But ever since I started doing comedy, that's one of the first things when uh, I learned. I need to be able to include everybody. Like everyone, I don't want to exclude anyone. When I'm up there on, on my um, doing my set, I want everybody to be able to laugh, not just a specific group. Oh, this one's for the yeah. guys. This one's for the girls. Mm -hmm. This one's for the couples. No, dog, this is every joke that I say, like I said, like I mentioned earlier about the stepdad shit or, or single parenting. Even though it's about that, I still want to make sure that everyone gets it, dog. Really? It's not specifically at one group of people, dog. So that's just key. That's been a key for me uh, as, as a comic, dog. Make sure everyone includes it. Not just, oh, uh, who smokes weed here, dog? No, let's talk about the weed. <laughs> uh, well, there goes 40% of the room, dog. That's not, you know, so yeah. it's just one of those things, dog. Yeah. Or CBD drops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fun. And I think that's such a good point for anybody that's in comedy trying to get better is I know that sometimes people do ask those questions or like, or they might say something that's geared specifically towards the women in the in the mm -hmm. crowd or the men in the crowd. And I think that when I first read about and, and was reading reviews and stuff about your special, I would read things about, oh, he's a, a single dad with three kids from two baby mamas, blah, blah, blah talking about um single life with or being a single parent and for a second on one of the when i read one of them i thought oh is this going to be specifically about that yeah. and yeah. it's it was but it wasn't excluding anybody it right. was opening that up because like you said earlier everybody at least knows somebody that's a mm -hmm. single parent or um, has experienced those things personally and i think that through that 
through the Spanish garnishes, through everything that you've done, you've done an exceptional job of being able to include everybody in your comedy yeah. and get those full laughs. So. I appreciate it, dog. Yeah, yeah man. It, it, it is, it's, 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 there's a science to this, fool. There, there's a science to this, dog. And I'm a student of the game, bro. Like, I'm still learning. I still make mistakes. Uh, and I'm not saying it's not good to talk about getting high or anything like that. No, it's all good. As long as, right. it's, dog, it's, it's, as, long as the punchline is going to be a payoff where everyone gets to laugh. That's the whole point. As long as everybody gets to laugh, that's what matters, dog. Not just, oh, I got, th- I got, the, I got the potheads to laugh. Fuck that. It's a pod joke. Make everyone laugh. And some people are yeah. really good at that. You know, with, and uh, with any, with any, with any fucking bit. That goes with every bit. Yeah. Even though yeah. I'm being a single parent, I want the happily married couples to laugh their ass off too. Right? So when it gets yeah. to that point, I understand with me also. So it's, it's yeah. science, dog, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one other thing that came to mind is when people joke about media, like TV shows or movies or something, and not everyone's seen it. It reminded me of your last bit when talking about the vow, and yeah. I hadn't seen it before. But the way that you, you were able to, to see describe- it. correct. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'll just see the first ten minutes because it sounds like yeah. you really <laughs> sold that. But then, <laughs> yeah, the rest of it. But no, the way that you talked about it was I was in it, and I and I felt captivated from the moments that you described, and then you went <laughs> off into what would it be like if you. Uh, we're in a coma for 10 years yeah, yeah, yeah. and saw Channing Tatum as a husband. So oh, yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. Let's go, yeah. babe. Let's, go. Know, let's hurry up before I, before I start remembering things. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, Jerry, thank you so much. I, we, um, we're going to get into some advice and answer some questions that some fans have brought in, sure. but, sure. um, I was going to ask, are you a good advice giver? I, I'm the worst doc. I am the worst. Whatever I do, <laughs> trust me, doc. I like that you're honest about it. That's good. A lot of guests, they just straight up lie. So, oh, man, all right, I'm we're going to make people divorce right now. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so we've got some questions, but before we dive into those, I like to reflect on an inspirational quote to help get us jazzed and ready to be able to respond to these questions. So before I get into my quote, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through your day. So Jerry, do you have any just really touching inspirational quotes that just pump you up? You should you should have you should have texted me ahead of time, dog, but uh, uh, I was just <laughs> here's a, here's a, I have one. I, I read one earlier today. He's manifesting positivity right now. <laughs> He's on Pinterest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can, I yeah I was like, I'm going to go to Instagram, see, follow one of my favorite IG models, see what they have to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's true. That, those are the best inspirational quotes. That it's usually s- some guy or girl just totally naked and they're like, strength is here's the one. Here's one. Here's one from one of my favorite toxic women that I follow. <laughs> it takes five seconds to text hi there are 24 hours a day if i'm not worth 2.5 seconds of your time you are not worth a position in my life (laughs) (laughs) you know it's funny because she's got a point but she also is really able to sound kind of like a bitch about it as well yeah like why would i want to women hate that they don't like when you don't (laughs) respond right away yeah I know. My wife is definitely like that. She's like, you didn't text me good morning. I was like, you're literally across the hall. And she's like, I know, but it's the 2.5 seconds. And she shows me the quote from the toxic model. But that was a great quote. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate that. All right. This quote that I've brought, it's actually not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot. And the robot's name is Inspirobot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man and then just mash them together for a beautiful Mm. inspirational quote. Interesting. So we'll try and decipher what it means. I'll go ahead and read it. It says, if you wish upon a star, you might one day actually become a liar. (laughs) So any thoughts, any inspiration from that quote? Well, uh, someone had a really tough uh, childhood, and uh, someone, somebody, someone, someone had never, never had his parents read to him at night. But uh, who, I, I guess it's as if you dream, dreamer, you're you're just uh, you're just that a dreamer. You're not basically that's what that means, right? So stop dreaming. 
I th- yeah, I think so. I was going to say, too, if like, you wish upon a... Up. Yeah. yeah, I think that could be it. Maybe that's what Inspirebot's trying to get through this uh, AI. I, I was thinking also, if you wish upon a star, like if I wished upon a star as a kid, I'm not going to tell my bros that I wished upon a star. So I'll become a liar. That's true. So I that's think true. That's, like you, that's like you lose your man card, guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, bro, I wished upon a star that I would get this job. And here I am sitting at the top. Bro. You wish upon a star, bro? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, you wish upon a what? <laughs> Well, what? Uh, Rose, I know. Is there any inspiration that you can draw from this or anything that you, that struck so out to you? If you wish upon a star, you become a liar? Something like that? What is it? That's right. That's straight um, from Inspire Box. I guess, yeah, you become a liar. I, I don't know. I kind of take it as like, if you wish upon a star, does it even come true? And are you lying to yourself? <laughs> oh, oh, so... Negative like answer. a fairy tale. Yeah, you like you believe yeah. in fairy tales, though. Yeah. All right. So I think we're turning people off to wishing upon a star. <laughs> yeah. Look at the stars, gaze, and then just leave them there. Okay. Yeah, perfect. wishes are making now that happen. We're, stars are just balls of gas. <laughs> That's another great inspirational quote, straight from Pumbaa himself. Yeah, I love yeah. that. All right. Now, we're going to dive into the questions. This first one was brought to us by our fan, Phil. Thank you, Phil. It's from Reddit, and it says, why do I feel inferior slash not like myself unless I am wearing a black shirt? I mean, all I ever wear are black shirts and jeans. Started doing it a few months ago, and now even white t-shirts feel weird. I don't know what is happening to me or why. I just don't feel like myself without it. Any ideas why? Because he's overweight. I don't know Phil, but I'm sure he's overweight. <laughs> Fat people love wearing black. Fat people, I don't like wearing black. I'm, I'm anorexic as fuck, bro. I'm really skinny. So wearing black makes me like, look like I disappeared, fool. So like, I get him. So he's obviously overweight. He, he needs to get back to the gym, get himself back working out before he's gonna, let, he's gonna start getting off the black shirts and back onto the turquoise and highlight yellow shirts like myself. Makes you look turquoise. a little bit. Stand out. Where did I take lavender? Jer- Jerry, that was like straight up medium shit. You just could tell instantly. Black shirt, fatty, get to the gym, <laughs> work out. That's fat talk, bro. That's chubby talk, bro. I, sure. I was thinking, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm normal size, I guess. But I like wearing black. It makes me feel a little more badass. Because it's like, mm. isn't there the regular Spider-Man? And then there's all black Spider-Man that's yeah, yeah, Spider-Man yeah. noir. And he's he's a little cooler, a little more edgy. Maybe maybe he just feels a little cooler too. He wants to be like a like a bad boy. Do you want to be a villain the whole time, always? Like a Hessian, like a hard rock. I like color. I like color. If you know what, if you hang out with me, I'm always wearing colorful stuff, colorful shoes. I like to. I like it. But black, I, I get. I, I look anorexic because it makes you look slimmer. It makes you look smaller. Full black makes you look smaller. <laughs> so Phil is dealing with. Check <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's amazing and also you always you do dress really well i remember seeing you on um they can't deport us all by chingo bling on netflix and you yeah. i think they were pretty bright red kicks yeah, right, and then yeah, yeah. on your special on hbo max that you had the blue shoes yeah. with the blue shirt Air max. you do a yeah. good job I love it, man. You know, look, fool, I, whatever it takes for whatever whatever it takes to keep people away from looking at my face, dog, it's all <laughs> it helps, fool. All right. When it once it gets up, dog, it's, that's what I'm wearing a bit right now about how I let's keep the mask. I like the mask wearing, dog. Whatever it takes to keep my face. I went from a six to a seven during the pandemic, fool. Thanks for <laughs> right? if we can vote on keeping Everybody this around. Personalities. You know. Oh god. That's hilarious. I was going to say too, you know, in one of the reviews, somebody had said that you look like a uh, Mexican Jimmy Fallon. Have you ever gotten that before? Not Jimmy Fallon, dog. I've got a Mexican. uh, No, it wasn't me, Jimmy Fallon. I think I read that one. Isn't that Stephen Corbett? That was the fanciest way I've ever heard his name pronounced. (laughs) But but I, I heard from Decider... It was Jimmy Fallon, but you know what? You maybe exactly. you're maybe you need to do late night because yeah. you got the face for like if you had a mug of coffee and you're oh, sipping yeah. it 
laughing it. Maybe Jesus could be the trumpet guy that's playing in the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might, my Andy, 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 Andy Richter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could be your Andy Richter. That's right. I could see it though. You've got, you've got the the very clean look and I, the glasses, dude. I love glasses, and I keep going to the eye doctor every year. And he unfortunately tells me that I have perfect vision, but I and really want to get the get fuck glasses. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so it's caused me to wear black now uh, because I'm edgy and sinister. <laughs> uh, either either lose some weight so it'll get you out of the black or maybe do some good. Be a good person. Understand that it's not all about being edgy and you can bring brightness to your life with bright colors. Or have is some your, style. Is being emo. Stop, stop being such an emo. <laughs> there you go. E exactly. Emo. All right. Question answered, we're gonna move on to the next one. This is, uh, it says, how do I tell the Del Taco worker to stop crumbling my napkins? So I go to the same Del Taco for my lunch break at 2 a.m. because I work a night shift and I do not have much choices at the time of night. I see the same Del Taco worker every time and she always crumbles my napkins. I find <laughs> it nasty that she would do that during a pandemic. Other employees neatly put them in. Ugh, I don't want to tell her in a bad way because she handles my food and I don't know if she might do something nasty and evil to it. Help. Yeah. <laughs> well, the first thing I was going to say is stop going to the Del Taco, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first mistake. You know, You're making some weird choices in your life where you have to go to Del Taco at two o'clock in the morning. I get it. It's work. Yes, I get it. Okay. So I'll back up a little bit. Second thing is that it's napkins, fool. Who the fuck cares? No, it's not crumbling. <laughs> Cool. I don't. It's napkins, bro, and it's from a. a who the hell cares? What do yeah. you mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, what if they're gonna be? T if you're worried about coronavirus, if they're touching them anyway, even if they're putting them in neatly and flat, it's already got corona all over it. So you don't you're have to worry it. about that. Yeah, it's unless they're right. like about, putting. Come on, give me a. Yeah, go, give, give me a double meat burrito. Hold the napkins. <laughs> no napkins. <laughs> There you go. There you, or ask for them at the very end. Get your package and then be like, oh, I forgot. Would you give me some more napkins? And then they'll give you more yeah, napkins. Unless they, from, from, from him. Yeah, unless they hate you. Then they'll just crumple them up and then just throw them in your face. But I don't know. At that point, you got to look and self-reflect because maybe you did something wrong. Are you wearing black? Do you look edgy? I don't know. <laughs> or so maybe she's just look at. mad that she works at Del Taco anyway and you're coming at two in the morning. To get food. That's poor thing. She's, so she's just like, get this boy. <laughs> it's a lose, lose. It's a lose, lose. It's a lose, lose. The, the customer and the employee. Yeah. Worst situation of their lives at this moment. So yeah. there's an intersect. So this is an example. This is an opportunity to do some good. First, find your first star, wish upon it <clears> to, for say, some goodness to yeah. happen for the Del Taco employee. Then say so, smile at her, do something nice. Maybe get yeah. her uh, a taco, treat her. Maybe she's hungry, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. When you get hungry, bad things yeah. happen. So I, I think there are a couple of things that you could do. Stop thinking so much about yourself. Think about this other person because they are stuck there. You have the choice to go to Del Taco. They are stuck and they have to serve mm -hmm. Del Tacos to everybody. So, or pack a lunch. I'm yeah. I, I'm sorry. I got real. I reprimanded them hard. I don't know. If they <laughs> that, but. All right. Last question. This one is from Reddit. It's found by our friend Liam. Thank you, Liam. It says, "Today I went to a dermatologist, and her assistant kept calling me cute, and I blushed, and I don't. Didn't, I didn't know how to respond. In future situations, how do I respond to these types of things without freezing up, feeling all the blush and smiles?" Wow, oh. interesting. Uh, can we know why she was going to a dermatologist? <laughs> oh, oh, Jerry new. wants to know, are, do we have an uggo on our hands? Yeah, or? Yeah. <laughs> Is it something under the hood or up above? <laughs> anyway, uh, well, obviously, he's, he's trying to spit game, bro, right? He's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to get at that. That's so right. That. Get, get, get that. So, so just go, just go in, just go in, ask for the number. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Maybe this person's shy. They've never experienced it before. What my advice to this is because if that, it doesn't happen to me often, but if a, a dental assistant or acne coach or whatever, it gives me <laughs> the what to, I, I'm not prepared. I don't expect it to happen. So I think you need to always expect 
things to happen. That's why in that video where that guy was in the trash bin and he scared people in a Halloween mm -hmm. costume and the one guy punched him in the face, that's yeah. not a natural reaction. That's trained because he was expecting always the worst. So I think Something. that if, yeah. if you're expecting somebody mm. to hit on you all the time, then you're going to be ready to just mm. pounce. Not punch him, pounce. Sorry, I did the wrong animation. Maybe he's really like, maybe the, the sister is really into pimple popping and she's really excited to get to him. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. I like Get it in <laughs> here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just want to pop them. I don't know. That could be a thing. That's like a, a fetish, right? Is that a fetish? Yeah. I, I would take my son to the dermatologist and I would like watch the dermatologist pop his pimples and I just really wanted to do it myself. <laughs> Girls like doing that. I had a girlfriend. I, I, used to like yeah. I hated oh, it. And I would Dude, go, get that one, get that one. He'd get so mad because he said it hurt really bad on some of them. So. Oh, I thought they gave them some sort of anesthetic or something so they numbed the face. No, they just mm -hmm. go in raw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just steam mm -hmm. your face and it gets really, really hot. So they get like, you know, soft enough and, you know, it depends on what kind you have. And he said he had one that hurt so bad and she popped it that said like he passed out for like a couple seconds. Ah, I forgot yeah. knocked out by a pimple. Yeah. <laughs> does, does he wish upon stars? What kind of guy is this? <laughs> no, He's probably uh, like, I might just say that. That's true. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. I can bleep it out if you want in post. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save him. Uh, all right. Well, those are all the questions. We've reached well, the Well, good end luck to everyone. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Good luck. Um, and please don't take our advice for the love yeah. of God. <laughs> I don't think but, this helps. Yeah, but Rose, thank you for joining, yeah, making a special you guys. appearance. I'm so excited. I, I was going to ask, you. Rose, Here do you have go. anything to plug that you have going on? I'll, I'll stand up live tomorrow, but that's tomorrow night. And let's see, you know, I don't have too many plugs here. Nice. Just have a happy holidays or Merry Christmas. Or I mean, I know it, your Merry Christmas, right, Jerry? And of course, Merry Christmas, Don. <laughs> you know, some people are like, Happy Holidays, and I didn't know. Step in. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. I'm Christmas too. I'm sorry. Okay, Just because okay, my okay. background doesn't look like a holiday card. <laughs> I know. I still... My mom had two trees in the house, and it's like, okay. And then That's beautiful. Yeah, so. Rose, is that, a, is that a picture, a portrait of you behind? Oh, That's God, no. Nice. That's my mom. She's so, like, That's my. she looks good. Yeah, she was a pretty, she told me she was a sex pot when she was young. I'm like, oh, God. Show. She's single. I know. Look at that. She's, she's, she's single. <laughs> my mom was like a hottie. You should use oh, that as your throwback Thursday picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody was like, who is that? I'm You're like, like this is me. Good. Hey, you should be like, this is me in 1954. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pictures of her she's like yeah they put like all these pictures of me back there i'm like all right oh that's beautiful well also jerry huge thank you to you for joining as well oh, thank and you, I, I wanted to ask what have you got going on what do you want to plug um where can people follow oh, you pretty that much uh, right now the, the hbo max is obviously it's airing right now please check it yeah. out think uh other than that dude i'll be uh pretty much low, low uh, laying low for the holidays but i'll be back at houston improv february 10th Houston Improv. Nice. And we're trying to build off of that. I just got that this week, dude. So uh, we got February 10th and then hopefully should try to add more dates in the surrounding Texas area, dog. Nice. How's Texas? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming, AZ. We're working on it. Boy, we'll be out there. Nice, nice. 10 p.m. Probably working on some dates. And uh, we'll be out there hopefully by March, man. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Nice. That's You'll awesome. Rosie, I'm That's awesome. I'm and that, here, right? Yeah, yeah. That'll all be in the show notes. So if people, people okay. can just click, get those tickets, follow you, watch the HBO Max special. Yeah, so check out my, uh, my IG, obviously, Comedian Jerry G. Uh, I'm sending like, now I got shirts, I got bobbleheads and stuff. So make sure you guys come oh, check yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. You got your, those bobbleheads. You should have showed yeah. us one. You have them right there. Uh, yeah, I got one. I got one. Yes, yes. yes. Bobbleheads. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Dude, that's how good. are you not how yeah. are you not a late night host already? Yeah. I think I can see that on your desk. Dude. Hell yeah. We're gonna that will get
there. Who got there? That's amazing. That is so cool. Oh, all right, guys. Well, thank good. you so much, man. Appreciate yeah, you thank guys. you for having me on. Thanks for letting me uh, hang out with you and Jerry. That was pretty awesome. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, hey, Steven, I'm a, uh, I'll follow back. Send me the info, the link to this so I can share it as well, dog, right? Yeah. And also, oh. how do I take a picture of all three of us on here? Um, I, I think you can. I'll, I'll send you one. I'll take one. All three of us? Yes. Every, everybody well, ready sure to smile? I, I have, yeah. I'm not going to look like my mother, but. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll do it. I'll look like your mother. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Done. Yeah, that's Perfect. so cool about your bobblehead. So, so awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you for it. having right. me. I hope to see you next uh, uh, in 2021. Yes, sir. Yes. Happy holidays. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Happy yeah, New Year. Too. Thank you, guys. Yes. All right. All right. Take care. This is fun. All right. See you guys. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rosie. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody.